Has anyone ever told you you're sexy? Hi everybody, this is Barbara. Welcome to my channel, Picky Chick. In today's video, I am going to unjar a jewelry jar. So what are we looking at here, you might ask? Well, let me tell you, behind that vintage tablecloth is a bookshelf that is full of jewelry jars that I have been collecting for the past two years. Yep, I sure have. Let me show you. So over the past couple of years, I have bought jewelry jars and jewelry bags and kind of stashed them away. And quite frankly, I didn't mean to collect this many jars, but well, there you go. I have collected this many jars. I'm going to pick one of these out today and we are going to unjar it together. Here's a look at the jar that I picked out and it was kind of arbitrary. Just pulled one off the shelf. Here's what we're looking at from the outside. And what I used to do and I've done here is I used to put notes like I bought this one on June 19th of 2019 and I had a 20% off coupon so they had it priced at $25.25 so I paid about $20 for this jar. So let's just go ahead and open this up. And I have not done this in so long and I just thought it would be fun to start opening these jars up every once in a while. <laughs> Dump this out. Let's get rid of this trash. Oops, something already fell on the floor. That's okay. Alrighty. I'll push most of this aside. And let's pull the first item out. This first piece is a bracelet and it has a magnetic clasp and it has these mesh tubes interlocking with these little stations and some of the stations have crystals and I just noticed on the inside it reads Serena Williams S2 first anniversary 2010 not sure what the anniversary part is so um, I am going to take the magnet to it just to see if maybe it's precious metal, maybe sterling silver, and it is not. So it's a cute little bracelet. Um, never even realized Serena Williams had a jewelry line. I do want to quickly mention that if you do see anything in the video that you'd be interested in purchasing, send me an email at kitsch.barbara at yahoo.com. I've got my email address here on the screen and I'll also include it down below the video in the description box. This next piece is a wooden necklace. It's very colorful and it has these little floral gold tone beads. And this does have tags. Look at that. This is definitely vintage. Uh, the reason? Who remembers Hex, the Hex company, before Macy's bought it and took it over? Wow, so this is new old stock. Uh, Eva Graham. And this says Carol for Eva Graham. I don't ever remember seeing this brand, but um, I don't I don't guess it's worth a whole lot of money. It's just a fun, colorful piece. This next piece is a necklace. It's on illusion wire. There are three strands of faux pearl, some crystals, and some tiny silver tone beads, station beads. This one has a tag on it, and that is 1928. Here's a look at what the 1928 tag looks like. This little piece is in very good shape. And you know what? I forgot to mention, if you're new here, you wouldn't know this. I am a full-time seller on eBay. So uh, a lot of times when I'm opening these jars and mystery jewelry boxes, I'm hoping I can find some pieces to list in my eBay store. And this one, I think I can list. And of course, not everything in these mystery lots are sellable. These all are going in a craft lot, which is just a group of jewelry that I put together that aren't sellable or may be sellable, but I just don't have time or the inclination. Some is broken, like this piece that's missing some crystals. This is a little mini tiara, goes in like a, a comb in your hair. And some of these other pieces, really not anything wrong with them, but I'm going to put them in the craft lot. 
Next is this very pretty bracelet. This is a silver tone bracelet and it has these little links in it that have mother of pearl and marcasite. I love the detail on these little links. Isn't this pretty? I'm pretty sure this is sterling silver, but I'm going to turn it over and look for some marks on it. Let's see. So just under the fold over clasp, I am seeing a mark. I think it's upside down, but you could probably make it out. It says 925. This is so pretty. Let's see what the magnet does with it yet. Yeah, this, I'm certain, is sterling silver. This is lovely. I definitely can sell this piece. Someone's going to love this. Here is a bone china brooch. I really love the colors in this. The flowers are so pretty. I think they're pansies, but I'm not sure. And typically when I find these brooches, they have some sort of chip. And that's what I am looking for as I'm turning this. I just found it. Okay, so this little stem right here, it looks like it's broken off. It doesn't appear like that when you first look at it. But yeah, I think this needs to be longer because that is clearly a, a break point there. This one, let's see, this is made by Royal Adderley. It says Royal Adderley Floral, made in England. So, always fun to find, but I have yet to find one without any kind of chip on it. This jewelry jar had these three watches in it. Um, this one is definitely very, very cheap. What can I say? So that's going in the craft lot. This is so lightweight. The next one is cute. Uh, none of them are running. This has um, little links all around and the back is marked Morona, which I think is a Target brand. So maybe all it needs is a battery, but that's going to go in the craft lot. And then finally is this watch. Look how small it's been sized down. The links have been taken out. So somebody either sized it for a child or had a super, super small wrist. Um, the face says sexy, S-E-K-S-Y. That's kind of funny. And the bottom is marked Seconda. I've never heard of Seconda. Unless it's super valuable, I'm not going to sell it. That's pretty funny sexy has anyone ever told you you're sexy what we have here is an artisan necklace these are chips of turquoise lapis and carnelian all linked together individual little chips linked together to go around the neck there's a floral pendant here which is ceramic and set in silver tone look how cute this pendant is i'm guessing that that is also handmade here is the setting and here's the back of the pendant. This is so cute. I'm pretty certain that sterling silver and the wire used to link the beads together, but I'll put the magnet on it. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, it is magnetic. So it is not sterling silver. However, I still think it's so cute and I love the necklace. I think someone else would love it and I am still going to list this one. This is so sweet. Look at this pretty knotted pendant on this double strand necklace. This is a silver tone, which it feels like sterling silver. And we have two strands. We have a lobster clasp closure. And not sure how easy it is for you to see, but there is a stamp right there that says Italy. And on this side, it is stamped 925. Let's take a quick measurement. I'm going to measure up to that point right there. This necklace measures about 17 inches long. This necklace is quite lovely. I like it. And I'm not surprised that there is no attraction with the magnet. So we have ourselves a sterling silver double strand necklace here and it's so pretty. A few more pieces going in the craft lot. Let me pull them all into the shot. This has been fun opening this jewelry jar. My local Goodwills don't sell them anymore. I know some Goodwills do. So um, I've enjoyed opening this. That I do have some local thrift stores that sell jewelry bags. So hopefully I can still find some of those. Let's see. I think all of these are going to go in the craft lot. Um, this angel pin is brand new and it does say gold plated. Uh, but I don't think it's worth that much. So that goes in the craft. 
and then just some worn out pieces uh, really inexpensive pearls faux pearl I should say some stick pins uh, this one has the letter R and a little enamel butterfly but all this is going in craft wow look how pretty this is this is a seed bead bracelet and this has a magnetic closure the colors are green and purple the seed beads themselves have an AB finish but this is also this also has a green uh, faceted crystals and it's embellished with this green adventuring and some amethyst beads this is so lovely I really like this one it's super easy to put on it just clicked right on with that magnetic clasp gotta love that this is a pretty pair of pierced earrings they are turquoise colored scarabs they're set in gold tone and the gold is pretty. There's no wear or no fading of that gold. Here's the other side. I'm gonna take the magnet to it real quick. All right, well the magnet is definitely sticking to the post. So they are not gold, however, they look great. They're pretty and I don't know, somebody might like those. Up here are pierced earrings and they're kind of a swirly painted enamel. I think they're probably like 1980s, quite lightweight, so they're going in the craft lot. Next are these textured button earrings that have a nice substantial weight to them. So they feel like they're really well made. I'm looking now to see if there's a mark. Oh, I'm surprised that there is not a mark on these, but they're quite lovely. I like these. This pair of earrings is quite striking. They're really interesting. I am pretty sure that they're artisan made. This blue base right here, this cobalt blue, is an interesting material. It almost feels like it could be like a paper or paper mache. There's a lacquer coating on top. This is adorned with these little shell charms and tiny little gold seed beads as well as crystals and a bright blue Rivoli crystal in the center. They're really cool, actually. I like these a lot. They're just really, really striking. Here are a couple of fun stretch rings. The red one has enamel ink painted red with clear crystals. The center crystal is missing. Other than that, they're all there. So that'll probably go in craft unless I fix it, but I don't have time. I just don't have time. Um, this one, nothing wrong with it. All the crystals are there. Also a stretch ring, a little bit of wear on the bottom of that one. So that'll probably go in a lot of stretch rings. Here is a vintage brooch. It's silver tone, but the metal is a little bit wearing. The crystals on this are black and let's turn this over. I am not seeing a maker's mark on this one, so this will end up in the craft lot. Next is this pair of earrings from Claire's, a pair of hoop earrings with some crystals dangling off or wire wrapped onto it. it says Sensitive Solutions, 850 retail. I will go ahead and put that in a craft lot. Here are two pieces. I believe they're both modern, but they have that, that vintage look. On the left, we have purple crystal and faux pearl set in gold tone. And I'll try the magnet here. Yeah, it's magnetic. There's no name on it. It has a little fold over clasp. Here's a closer look and I take it back. They're not gold tone, they are silver tone. It's just that I think they need to be cleaned up a little bit. But all the stones are there and it's actually quite cute. Here's the second necklace. Let's try the magnet. Holy cow, that is one aggressive magnet. Well, that confirms it. This is not sterling silver. The jar had a couple pair of earrings still on the card. This one is made by Rachel, which I've never heard of. Uh, it says one carat cubic zirconia. Now, if this is the earring that belongs to the card, um, I did learn that cubic zirconia can have color. Now, I thought it was more clear. I didn't realize it could be like, a, that's almost like a cloudy stone. So I'm not sure if that earring belongs to this card or not. But the card does have a price tag on the back that the price was ripped off. Cute pair of earrings, little mint green studs set in silver tone. I thought I would take the earring off the card just to examine to see if it had any indication of precious metal and I don't see any marks. Why don't I go ahead and try the magnet and see what happens. And that's what happened. <laughs> it's not 
sterling silver. Here's another pair of earrings still on the card. Lady Remington. So I think these are vintage. Uh, it's a pretty pair of earrings. They have a very beautiful colored emerald green stone, a rectangular shaped stone. They're set in gold tone. And then there's this a tiny little crystal also on top. The backs, the backs are silver tone. Interesting. Um, no, they're silver tone and the front's a gold tone. Go figure. I will look up Lady Remington to see if these have any value and um, at the very least they are attractive. Here is a gold tone and faux pearl scarf clip and it doesn't appear to have any kind of maker's mark on it and there's a little bit of scuffing on this piece so I blah 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 blah. <laughs> I'll probably put that in the craft lot also. Here are a couple of bits and pieces, probably all going to end up in the craft lot. Maybe I will save this heart pendant here. Um, just uh, some vintage earrings. They look pretty old and beat up. I will take the magnet to them. I should, huh? Just to make sure they're not gold. And they're not. So um, these are all going into the craft lot. Let me take a look at this. This is kind of cute. Let's get this back into focus here. This is an ivory colored enamel heart with a couple of crystals in the center. And on the back has an inscription, May the Lord bless my precious daughter. So I kind of like that heart. It's pretty. There were a couple rings in the jar and here's one of them. Now this looks vintage to me, definitely vintage. Um, it's a little bit bent, but it doesn't bother me right there at the tip. The stone looks like it is possibly spiny oyster maybe coral what do you guys think i love the shape of the top of the ring and this one looks like it's adjustable this is definitely vintage wouldn't you say um, i like it i like it dent and all so that is pretty darn cool here's another ring this one's silver tone and it's got this little half ball covered with crystals i like the band here this is cute and it looks like this is a stretch ring see it is this is a stretch ring that's unique i've never seen one quite like this so this is quite pretty there's a little bit of wear at the bottom there but this is a cute little ring i like this cross on this necklace this is a gold tone cross pendant necklace with a dark red crystal on the cross the gold is really pretty here's what the other side looks like and I do not see any maker's mark on it. I will get the magnet on it in a minute. And here's what the chain looks like. It's a very delicate rope chain. So let's see what the end looks like. Here's the end of the necklace. And let's turn this tab over here just to see if there's anything on the other side. I do not see anything. We have a lobster clasp closure. Let's see what happens with the magnet. The pendant is sticking to the magnet, so that is not precious metal. What about the chain? Interesting, the chain is not sticking to the magnet. So what I will do is test this. I'll put up on the screen now what I found with the test, whether it's precious metal or not. It is such a lovely necklace. I really do love that pendant. This next ring is so pretty. Oh, I love the band and look at that color of crystal in the middle. At least I think it's crystal. I'm not quite sure yet. Um, look at that work. There are like little layers of petals or leaves on the sides. It's open. You can see that. And here's the bottom of the ring. I'm just loving the color of this stone. Very pretty. And here's what the inside looks like. I'm going to see if I can find a mark on this. There is a mark right there. I hope you can see it. It says 925. I'm going to size this now and see what size this is. This is, I'm going to call that an eight and three quarters, maybe a nine. So it's a larger ring, probably fit me. I'll have to try this on, but isn't this gorgeous? I've got to try this on and it's a little bit big but I could get away with it. This is so pretty. Why not weigh this ring while we're at it, right? So let's see how much this weighs. 
that says 11.39 grams. Now, of course, that includes the stone, but that is a hefty ring. Here is a sweet brooch. This is a silver toned dolphin and the body is sort of brushed. It has texture and the fins are polished. He has a little smile on his face. At least I see one <laughs> and, and his little eye and let's turn him over. Here's the back of him and there's a rollover clasp. And I was seeing something that looks like it's printed right in there. So I am going to take a closer look. I had to turn him the other way to read that, but that says Bo, S-T-E-R. So it's a Bo Sterling. A little bit about Bo Sterling. It's actually Bo Craft, and I believe in the mid 40s is when they started the company, and I don't think they make jewelry anymore. But uh, towards the end of their production, they were known for mixing the polished silver with the brushed silver, which makes sense with this little piece. So this is definitely a vintage piece and I think it's adorable. We have got another ring coming out and this is pretty too. I am seeing somewhere though. You can see the copper showing through over here. It looks like a mother of pearl cabochon. It's an attractive ring, but it looks like it has just a little bit. Yeah, a lot of wear, especially on the bottom. I will go ahead and size this one. This one is a, a size eight. Here's a delicate necklace. I like the pendant. It has like a light purple oval colored crystal in the center surrounded by clear crystals. And it hangs from a very delicate, it looks like a box chain. Here's a better look at the chain itself. It is finished with a lobster clasp and it looks like this is also stamped 925. Here is a very pretty necklace. This has a serpentine chain and these pearl stations all up the necklace. And this looks like it's possibly sterling silver. There's a look at the spring clasp and the spring clasp itself has a 925 stamp. So it's sterling silver. And then you can see Italy right there on the tab holding the spring clasp. I'm pretty sure that this is sterling silver, but I will take the magnet to it just to see what happens. And it is not magnetic. So I'm very certain that this is a sterling silver and pearl necklace. I really like this a lot. Here's a delicate bracelet. It's very cute. It's got an oval marcasite pendant and it's got two strands of very delicate chain. You may recognize this little mark right here, or the charm I should say. It's a four leaf clover and this is a Lucky Brand bracelet. And here is that marcasite pendant. And when we turn it over, you can see another pattern on the other side, which is also typical of Lucky Brand. There's a look at the chain. This is very cute. There are the two four leaf clovers. And of course, this has a lobster clasp closure. This is a very nice bracelet. I'm pretty sure it's sterling silver, but we will be taking a closer look. I've actually had this exact same bracelet twice before. I believe both times were from a thread up mystery jewelry box. Some people call this a macaroni bracelet and I believe um, it's also called a San, San Marco. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's take a look right here. We see that there is a safety clasp. So let's undo that. And there's a mark right there that says 925 Italy. Now let's undo the clasp. Here we go. It's kind of a hidden clasp, I guess you call that. There's the mark on the back. And here is what the underside looks like. And it looks like it needs some cleaning where it's tarnishing right here in between all the little elbows or all the little macaroni links. And it feels quite substantial. So I'm going to go ahead and weigh this. Let's see how much this weighs. It weighs in at 21.52 grams. The length of this bracelet is exactly seven and one quarter inches. Well, I am really glad to have found this in the jar. This is a great piece. Let me know what you guys thought about this jar down in the comments section. It seems like forever since I opened a jewelry jar. I'm glad you guys came in to spend time with me today and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.